In this tutorial, I'm going to show you to set up WP Fastest Cache, which is a caching plugin. It's a simple one compared to things like WP Super Cache or W3 Total Cache. They're quite complex. They have a lot of settings. The free version of WP Simple Cache does a great job. There's a lot fewer settings, so it's much less confusing. And maybe that's right up your alley. And we're getting started right now. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If it's your first time here and you like WordPress, you like tips and tricks and getting better at it and serving your clients better, start now by clicking subscribe and then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. And this video right here is part of a plugin playlist, the top plugins for 2018. Each plugin that I highlight in the top plugins has a complete walkthrough. It's linked to in the description down below the whole playlist. And I encourage you to check those out because those are powerful plugins. And I'm willing to bet you're probably going to use at least two or three of them if you're not using them already. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and check out this tutorial. WP Fastest Cache is a plugin. So to install it, we have to head over to plugins and then add new. Search for WP Fastest Cache. It's this first one with the cheetah up here. It's got great reviews, 1,900 reviews, five out of five stars for 500,000 active installs. Actually better reviews than WP Super Cache at four and a half stars for fewer reviews. It was updated in the last three weeks and it's compatible with the current version. That said, even though all the numbers look good, I still recommend that you back up your site files and your database before you install any plugin because you never know, stuff might go sideways. If you don't have a backup process yet, check out the Updraft Plus tutorial that just popped up in the card above or in the description down below to get your backup process set up. If you're ready to install, click on Install Now and then Activate. And now we have a new menu option near the bottom called WP Fastest Cache with a little cheetah there. Not so subtle indication of how fast this plugin will make your site, hopefully. And one of the appeals of this plugin is the settings are very simple, especially in the free version. A lot of these tabs over here have paid version stuff on them. And the free version really is just this page and only the ones that aren't grayed out. So the options are very limited, but it does the job anyway. I'm just gonna quickly go through these tabs and then I'll go through these settings after that. Delete cache, this top part where this cache stats is the paid version. For the free version, you can delete the cache and delete cache and minified CSS and JavaScript. The reason you want to delete cache is if you're making changes to your website, but you're not seeing the changes actually take effect on the front end, it's probably a caching issue, either in your browser or in the page cache in the website caching plugin. So that's when you delete the cache. If you're doing changes to CSS and JavaScript and you have the option on to minify them, then you gotta delete the minified JavaScript and CSS, otherwise, your CSS and JavaScript changes also won't be taking effect. Cache timeout rules is pretty advanced. It's not something you really need to worry about. For image optimization, the options are all on the premium version. There are other plugins that can help with image optimization, so you don't need to use this one. There's also ways to do image optimization before you even upload the image to your site. We've got a tutorial for that in the card up above using Photoshop. In the premium tab, we have more information about premium. On the exclude tab, you can set rules for excluding pages user agents, cookies, CSS, JavaScript. And that is a great idea because there might be a page that's highly dynamic on your site where maybe you have the home page that's constantly refreshing with new blog posts that are published. So then you can have that page excluded. So if you do find you have a page that's highly dynamic, you can exclude it here. CDNs are content delivery networks. Most of them are paid. Some of your hosting accounts will have a CDN built in. So contact your host if you're not sure, or you might be able to use one of these if you wanna get a CDN. Database information is also premium version only, just gives you statistics about your database and allows you to clean up some of it right from here. So if you go back to these settings, all the ones that are grayed out are for the premium version. After you install this plugin, if you actually want the caching to happen, you have to click on enable cache. Preload means if you check this box, it's gonna create a cache right away. So if you check all these boxes, and we just cache everything. And you can restart it after it's completed so it keeps going in a loop. I usually don't do that. I just pick all of these and then it, it'll start caching right after we click submit. If we don't do that, what would happen is whenever someone first visits the page, that page will be cached and then they'll be shown the cached version, which makes their load time a little bit slower for that first person 
and this will make it so that first person has a fast load time because it'll be cached before they even get there because we're caching it proactively before a page is visited. We have the option to not show the cache for logged in users, to not show the cache for mobile users. We have the option to clear the cache when a new post or page is published or updated. Those are usually pretty smart because if you update a post, you want the update to be visible. Whereas if you present a cached version, the update won't be seen. So it's usually smart to definitely do it for the update post. The new post generally, because it's a new URL, it's a new page, usually the caching wouldn't be an issue, but sometimes it is. So it's smart to have both of, both of these checked. And I usually clear the whole cache when this happens because it's always good to refresh your cache anyway. Minify HTML, that's smart because that makes the load time of the HTML shorter. Gzip is another way of doing this. Gzip is down below as another option. Minify CSS, also smart because that will make, what it basically does is it takes out all the white space in a CSS file. So a lot of the CSS tutorials you see on this channel, there's gonna be carriage returns, there's spaces, there's indents. All of that is removed when you minify CSS and that reduces the size of the file. Makes it harder to read and harder to work with for a human, but this is computers we're talking about. Computers don't need to have all those spaces to read the CSS. They can read it all in one horizontal line. So that's what minify CSS does. Combine CSS, this sometimes breaks a website, so I would not check this first, nor the combined JS, and then I'd set all the settings that you wanna set, submit it, see if the site works with caching, and then come back, turn on combined CSS, submit, look at the site again, see if it breaks. If it does, don't do combined CSS. Do the same process with combined JS to see if that breaks the site. And if they don't break the site, that's great. Then you're having fewer HTTP requests, which means your site will load faster. But if it does break your site, then at least you know not to turn those on. Gzip, this will reduce your file size when the page is loaded. I have a tutorial dedicated to setting up gzip manually through the ht access file there's a link in the card above and the description down below if you don't want to do it through this plugin or maybe you don't want to use this plugin but you do want gzip check out that tutorial browser caching allows caching on the browser side this can affect css changes as well so definitely if you have this on you got to clear your cache before you start doing css changes disable emojis i don't have any uh, emojis on my site but maybe you do and having these removed from the cache and in the inline CSS is going to make your site load a lot faster because all those little guys, are all, they're all little images. And if they're not little images, they're all CSS based, but still they, they take time to load, especially if you have a huge emoji library. You can choose your language right here. I'm gonna stick with English. I'm gonna click on submit. The options have been saved. If I head out to the site, see if it still loads, that'll be fantastic. It may load a little slower because right now it's it's running the preload cache. Go to an inner page, the home page works. It's always a good sign. And it looks like the inner pages work as well. And now we have a caching plugin on the website. So that's all there is to it. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Check out the playlist of top plugins for 2018 in the description down below, maybe the card up above too. And next up is clicking one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you can get even better WordPress. Until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.